Hey everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Real Romance. My name is Robert and this is Brittany. Hi. And we are going to discuss some movies today. Mm -hmm. um, I want to start off by saying that we were going to go to On the Basis of Sex, but because of all the snowstorms and things, we had to prioritize and that was kind of a last minute addition. So we may plop it in to the next episode or in the future sometime, or as a bonus. But uh, just stay tuned for that, because that may be a thing. Uh, but we do have some great choices over the last three weeks. Or really, two and a half weeks. Yeah, because Escape Room we saw pretty early into the year. Yeah, Escape Room was the first real movie of the year, after all the December craziness. Uh, but we went to Escape Room, and then we went to... Replicas. Replicas. And the upside. Then, yeah, then we crammed the last three in basically last yeah, week. We we kind of marathoned it. We had we went to the upside. We went to glass last night, and then tonight we went to a dog's way home. Uh, a lot of very different movies. So do you want to just start chronologically with what we went to, or? Well, first I I kind of want to talk about about dog's way home first, and then go backwards. I don't know, but but let me just say that. We just watched Andre's video on YouTube, right? You know, Andre the Black Nerd on YouTube. I'm a big fan. And he kind of talked about, like, nerd fatigue, right? Basically, he said, nerds be angry and be hating on each other, and we're not allowed to have our own opinions, which I can't disagree with, because... There are some movies that I thought were really fantastic, but everyone else was like, "That's were terrible. But I feel like sometimes like people are like, you can't say that your real opinion because somebody's going to get mad. Right. Like, if you say you loved it, it was amazing. You're just like a corporate sellout. But if you say you hated it, well, why you got to be such a hater? Like, that movie was amazing. Yeah, so for me, like, what I got out of it is that on this, on this podcast, I just kind of want to be real about stuff. You know, I, I don't want to water it down. And even though we buff up the fact that we do have AMC A-list, so we go and see, you know, two movies I, a week sometimes. I know sometimes. that there are other ones that work really good, but... A it's what we use. A-list makes the most sense logically for us since a in Indiana we have more AMCs nearby us than anything else. Right. In order to go to a theater that is not AMC... It's a real hassle. It's, it's a real drive for us. And even some of the ones like the nicer theaters down about an 45 minutes to an hour from us are still AMCs. So logically, for us, it makes sense to go to an AMC and just do the A-list because if we do want to go to some individual theater or something else, we can just put out the money for it. Like if it had a, an indie film that right. we weren't playing. But... The point I'm, I want to make is that sometimes we push things based on like what we like. I, I like Marvel a lot, but I want to try to stay as impartial about things like DC and other no stuff one pays as possible. Us for yeah, anything. we're not paid at all. I mean, my job barely pays me. <laughs> just, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, no, every, everyone could use a little raise. Um, but I mean, a lot of a lot of things are happening all around the country with the shutdown and everyone's you know has is very high stress and especially with the weather it's just a lot of things are crazy right basically, now basically just be nice to each other respect yeah. one another's opinions yeah and, it's okay that i thought robin hood was a great movie and it's okay that you thought aquaman was bad it wasn't horrible it just wasn't great like i just was expecting a lot more i know we are we already talked about it right so. Ep episode two. Check one. it out. That episode was episode one. That was episode no. one. Yes. Was it? I no. can't remember. I don't know. I th I think that yeah, was yeah because it was like the last movie on episode one. Ah. Uh. Oh yeah, it oh, was. Hold on. I can tell. No, because it, it was so superhero heavy. Yeah, it was. But if I have offended you 
on my social media or anything, know that it wasn't intentional. He has a big mouth. He I do. And sometimes I mean. say things out of line or things that I don't realize may be construed. If my puppy pictures offended you, you can suck it because those puppies are adorable. They're so cute. And they're the best puppies in the whole world. Yes, but... Uh, all right. Now, now that I've kind of talked about some non-movie stuff to start mm-hmm. off, let's really jump into well, it. Why don't we just work backwards? All right. We're going to work backwards from what we saw tonight, which is A Dog's Way Home. Mm. A Dog's Way Home, for me, was a, a rudimentary remake of Homeward Bound, only without any sort of cast diversity. It's all monologued. Look. It's poorly CGI'd, but there's a lot of heart there, so there is there is that. When it, the first trailer came out the, at first, I was really excited to see it, and then the more we saw the trailer, like, the less excited I got. And it came to a point where we Robert dra- dragged me to this movie because I really didn't even want to see it at this point. I, I just... No, because I said, Brittany, you wanted to see this, so we're going to go see it. It's either that or on the basis of sex. And since I dragged you out to Vice, and you are not a huge fan of the whole political Look, thing... I'm, I'm sure it's a good movie, but honestly, if I go to the movies, I don't necessarily want to watch a political bio flick. Like, that's something I... Like, if I was interested enough, I would watch it at home in my uh, in my pajamas. Yeah. going to the movies to see it seems like a lot for Especially me. since there's political overload nowadays with the government shutdown and stuff. I just get tired of it all. Yeah, it's just shoved down your throat. and. I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg is an awesome woman, and that doesn't take away from the fact that she is, but do I necessarily want what, to go you sit You don't want to for, sit through it. Sit for two hours? No, maybe 40 minutes. Right. But A Dog's Way Home, uh, you get... You don't get everything in the trailer. I thought you got the whole oh, movie in yeah, the trailer. Yeah, you did. I mean, there were parts no, of no, it. No, no, Like, a lot of the pieces they didn't include in the trailer because they were a moot point. Yeah, but they weren't. They, in, they, they were still interesting, but the, it was... The entirety of the story was basically told in the trailer. Dog gets lost. It, the way she gets lost is different from what it shows in the trailer. But essentially, she gets lost... Trying to wait, find her way home, and then it takes her forever. Right. And she finally gets home. That's all in the trailer. Like, it's not surprising. No. And the trailer itself, like, like yes, it does cut out a lot of the middle stuff that happens. Right? The major point that wasn't in the trailer is that there's this evil dog catcher that is discriminating against, discriminating against her. Because Speaking of dogs finding their way home, hello, Hi, Miss sweetie. Kathy. Um, hello, okay, sweetie. Okay, look. The only parts I liked about the film, really... I mean, there was a lot of, like, tear-jerky moments, but I felt like a lot of those were ruined by jokes after, so it really wasn't, like... The impact wasn't strong enough. But the, I thought there were two really good, like, undertones. Um, the first was, like, a commentary uh, overall... Arcing, hello, there's another Hi, one now. Come here. Um, commentary on Pitbull Laws. The law in Denver, and it, it explains it in the movie, and it's accurate. We weren't sure if it was completely accurate or not. But basically, pit bulls are banned there. Any pit, And that doesn't include just pit bull terriers. It includes staffies um, and anything with a bully breed in it, essentially, outside of American bulldogs and English bulldogs and French bulldogs, which are technically not bully breeds, but regardless, they get mistaken a lot for said breeds which it talks about how basically they're since they're banned they can if they your dog gets out or for any reason they see your dog and take them to the pound if through they will do a breed exam and basically that just consists of three different animal control officers being like yes it has pit bull no it has no pit bull it's not like a dna test no it's just they look at eyeballing it and I have a real issue with this. I don't want to go into where specifically I work, but but I I work, and I have worked as a as a dog bather and with dogs at a unknown unnamed pet store, um, but so I see dogs on a daily basis. I spend forty hours of my week, basically almost entirely devoted to the care and maintenance of dogs, 
And to be able to firmly identify a dog as Pitbull is just completely ridiculous. Because there are dogs that I can guarantee have no Pitbull in them. But if you took the average person on the street, they would be like, yeah, that dog's a pit bull. Like, no. Or if you ask them, is this a pit bull, they would say, yeah, because they, they don't know any better. The dog in the movie, to me, didn't look like it had pit bull. No, not hardly at all. It Maybe a little, but mostly it looked like a lab German Shepherd mix. Yeah, I can see our, one of our dogs is a Pomeranian Mini Pincher mix, and that's Sandy. We, we have four dogs. Yeah, and... She, everyone says, oh, nice chihuahua. What a nice chihuahua. But we know for a, pa- a fact that she has no she chihuahua. She has none. But she, but she got a a color complexion from the mini pincher side and, and, the, the, and like the, mixed the hair. coat. She, she kind of got a mixed hair. It's longer than a pincher but shorter than a Pomeranian. Right, but, she, but her facial structure is very much of a pincher. I mean, it is, but it, her nose is shorter, more like a palm. She doesn't have that big fluffy fur as a palm. So with the other three dogs, everyone just assumes that she's Chihuahua. But the dogs, we're not even positive any of our dogs have Chihuahua in them. Right. We, don't, we, we, have, need, we need to get one of those testing kits. But what was your second point? My second point was it had some really nice commentary about veterans and how just utterly depressing that they can come home to yeah, their no, life. Yeah, the undertone of... Because a lot of it happens at a VA hospital, and they... There's a homeless man that has a really sad story. Yeah. That was, like, super sad, and I felt like they glossed over it because, oh, it's a kid's movie, and there's a dog, and right, but she doesn't know what's going on, but... But the homelessness as, of veterans is... As an adult, that was a really just sad, like... Right, and, the, and Bella is somewhat of a support dog to people who are struggling with injuries and PTSD and stuff like that who really just can't cope after serving in the military. And so even though this is a, like you said, it is a kid's movie, it, it touches on a couple of things. Also, game hunting it touches on. Yeah, because, briefly it touches, um, and that was... Now, if you've oh. seen the trailer, you know that uh, Bella, the main character, the dog, she, uh, you know, she spends time with a cougar. Uh, but the story, that subplot unfolds when a cougar is shot in the wilderness and these two game hunters come and they're taking pictures of it and be like, how much can we get for the corpse and all this stuff? And, and it was really... It was really sad. It's a lot of heavy stuff for a kid's movie. Even though there was very little substance to the movie, it did throw in some things. I just felt like they were glossed over too much. Right, because they're like, no, but look at the puppies, look at the kittens, look at the I do have to the say, animals. real quick, that, clarifying on our earlier point, we do not in any way, neither one of us, think that pit bulls are by any means, like, just should be discriminated against. Right, like, it's, no, it's it's a per dog basis, not a per breed basis, because saying that some of our, our, we have four dogs that are very, very similar, and one of them is much more butt. much more aggressive than the other three, and it riles them up, and so they often get in fights. But because she's not a mean dog. She just she has tendencies. She's she very has, loyal. She has buttons that that are pushed easily, more easily than the others. That's not anything wrong. It's not anything we did wrong. It's not anything she does wrong. It's just the way she is. Now she would never bite anyone. That's not the kind of aggressive she is. But she has issues with other dogs. But we're well aware of that, and we keep those sort of triggers away from her. Right. We don't take her out in public Say, if we can. We... Saying certain dogs are, are predisposition to certain aggression is not unnecessarily untrue, because certain types of dogs are are bred in certain ways. Just like certain types of dogs... They'll bark more, or they'll be yeah. more active in the yard. I mean, Shiba Inus are whiny. Like, they cry and they don't they don't bark they like yip and and howl about stuff all the time but that's just the way they are it's not a bad dog it's just they were bred to be that way like that's like saying you know a border collie they're bred to herd things they are they have that bred into them that's something we have selectively bred into that sort of thing but that doesn't make any dog bad or good it's just the way they are now there is a disorder that can cause your dog to at a couple years of age suddenly develop aggression issues that result in that dog having to be put down because it just gets too bad but that can literally happen to any breed um it just tends to affect larger dogs more because we have eight pound dogs if our dogs are being bratty we pick them up and put them in the kennel right. they're chunkable not not that we want to chunk them but if they get in fights you can pick one up with one hand 
the other up with the other hand and remove them but easily. You, you can't chuck a an 80-pound dog. Yeah, an 80-pound German Shepherd or a 100-pound Rottweiler. Right, it's if a big not, boy jump on you, you're stuck. You fall down. Yeah, no kidding. But... but back, <laughs> back on topic. The worst parts of the movie... First off, there's no surprises. Basically, everything's given to you in the trailer. Secondly, no, including the final moment yeah. where it's like, oh, "You're home, Bella." Roll credits. Like, like it's literally in the in the trailer. In the trailer I mean, it shows little, her coming home. There's a little bit after, but there's no surprise. There's so no... I, I guess it's to show all the kids. Be like, "Okay, well, you're going into this movie, and you know there's going to be a happy." It's all ending. about the journey, not the end. Exactly, like, but it's not. It's. I mean, there's a few things and, and then, interesting stuff, but eh. the CGI was so bad. Okay. No, it wasn't it so. Was. No, okay, it wasn't so bad. You remember when they tried to do CGI people like ten, fifteen years ago, and it all just looked really fake. And nowadays, when they when they CGI that sort of thing, it's gotten much much better. Okay, well, it's like they're using that same old technology on yeah, they bit on off, animals. They bit off way more than they could chew. Yeah, because they because the story itself does involve a cougar a lot, and Look, they can't use live. If they had taken the money they spent on CGIing random animals into the scenes, and just spent that on the animals that were important. Oh yeah, they included like birds flying and like that would have saved buffalo. Them, like, those were bison. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. My bad. Anyway, my bad. They're also, in America. I had some major issues with the wolf and cougar size. The wolves and cougar, the wolves were first off not nearly big enough because an average dog like would be dwarfed by a gray wolf. They looked more like wolf dogs as well. They didn't look like there was no way no, any of those were purebred wolves. You know how you go on Facebook and they're like, "Oh, wolf puppies for sale." It was it was like those but because those, they're not even wolf they're puppies, dogs. they're huskies. They're dogs. Yeah. And the cougar... And, but they were CGI'd, too. The cougar was weird. Like, it... it at too, points... Too much facial features. At points it looked real, and at points it didn't. And it was also... The size was so questionable. Like, I felt like when it was a kitten, it was, like, big. It was kind of big. But then as it got older, it didn't really get much bigger. Like, it... Well, until that last, the last scene, it was yeah, pretty Yeah, but big. it wasn't... Like, Bella was made into like a huge dog like yeah and there's no way when comparing her to the humans well it's not like Bella's it's not so much Bella's a huge job as they just kind of like understated the others but in for the CGI like I felt like when they closed up on the face they like they tried to show a lot of emotion even with Bella like there were some scenes where she was CGI where she was CGI like there's there's a scene where they're playing on on a frozen lake or a frozen pond and they're jumping and playing around and it is Clearly, there's no questioning. They just there's filmed CGI, some snow. right? They filmed snow and they did all that digitally. Uh, there's also kind of a fight scene with some wolves, and they move the camera around really rapidly, rapidly and at odd angles, so that you know you don't notice that the CGI is that bad. It's like they changed the camera angles so tried. so you wouldn't notice and. Uh, we noticed. Overall, I gave it two popcorn buckets because it wasn't like a, a horrible movie. But like, if if you're thinking about going out and paying money to watch it, I would just no, unless you have like little kids who love yeah, animals. Yeah, kids and stuff. would like it. Right. It's it, it's a nice little getaway, kids. But I do have to say that part of the experience of watching the movie was ruined by. I was just about to say that. Like okay, so there is three different groups of people that ruined our experience. The people to the right of us who politely asked at the beginning if they could sit in the chair next to us despite the fact that there was a whole row. Yeah. and But the lady who ended up sitting next to us, she was on... and She must have been like 14 oh, or God, something. They were, they were probably was, 15 or she 16. She was on her phone the whole like time. Like every five minutes she would pull her phone out. And, she, and, she, and I know because I looked over Brittany's shoulder and she was just... Texting on Facebook Messenger and scrolling through photos and Instagramming. It's and like, bitch, no. Like, if you're, it says at the very beginning of the movie, don't ruin the don't movie. Don't ruin the movie, and here you are ruining the movie. The five-year-old that was over my left shoulder, one row back, 
I understand them ruining the movie because they're five years old. They're talking. They're giving live commentary. My part that I didn't get was why the mom wasn't like, shh. Because if that was my child, and I'm not trying to comment on anyone's parenting style. Because we're not parents, so we don't know. But if it was my kid, I'd be like, Inside Jimmy, you got to talk a little quieter, okay? Like, I, I'm not trying to tell the kid that he didn't have to talk. That's fine. But he was starting to get to a point where he was, like, shouting. And that seemed a little unnecessary. Like, yeah. okay, you got to tell your kid, like, there's a movie voice and there's a not movie voice. And I understand he's little, but the and, mom was just letting it go. No, and get, he was and, getting and progressively is, louder and louder. First, the first little bit. Was the, cute. There was no, not a whole lot of outbursts. But as the movie went on, it became more and more frequent because the kid got away with it. Yeah, the mom was not like, okay, we got to be quieter. Like, that was, for me, what bothered me. And then the people behind us kept kicking my seat. And they were old enough to know better. They weren't kids. They were teenagers on a date. There there was no way they were younger than 16. They looked young. I mean, oh, you got, you, I say young. Like, we're not, we're in our late 20s. Like, we're not old. But we're not. These like, damn kids and their iPods. Yeah, anybody under the age, under my age, I'm pretty much just, even people my age, I'm kind of yeah. like. No, we're old souls. Like we're we're just inside. so jaded by by young people. I just don't understand, and Robert gets it more than me because he's on his phone more. But I just do not understand how you cannot put your phone away for two hours. There is nothing that important unless you are like an EMT or a doctor. Like, there's nothing that important that you need to have your phone out during the movie. And it's different. Like, do you, you have? Know, a, do you have a child at home you need to be listening for? Then like, you shouldn't have gone out. You probably shouldn't have gone out if you can't, like... Right, but... And no, and, and if you pull it out because you need an update on mom in the hospital or something, that's one thing. But it was Facebook. Yeah, you don't need to pull it out every five minutes. You pull yeah. it out once, check it, and put it away. Now, speaking of social media, uh, this last week I actually uh, uninstalled Twitter on my phone. And it's been... I mean, it takes some getting used to. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, like... A huge fan of it, but... We're getting it, pretty distracted, though. It's, it's also kind of... This is unrelated to the topic. Oh, this is far gone. I don't know. I was kind of hoping to move on to the next movie. Yeah, because we've been talking forever. Two popcorn buckets for Dog's Way Home. Agreed. Kay. All right, so last night we went and saw Glass. Okay. Uh, it was decent. Like, I liked it. Don't get me wrong. I liked it. But there was nothing like fantastic or like groundbreaking about it like it, it was just a, a decent flick it was enjoyable the acting was really good um it was an okay writing but the ending was just such a letdown for me yeah, yeah i'll i'll say this i can see why the critics would say that they were underwhelmed by it i get where they're coming from on this Pessy, i stop. i know she can lick my hand all she wants I I personally found the movie very interesting with a lot of interesting characters uh, showing off their powers, working against each well, other, with each other. That's why I was disappointed in the ending. I won't give anything away, but basically... No, no okay, I, I'll, I'll give away things that you can get from the first ten minutes of the movie. Okay, there is a huge tower that's being built in Philadelphia, and it's this huge thing. And in the movie, they kind of tout this tower over and over again, which leads you to believe that that's going to be a major plot point. But that, you're going to give away spoilers, babe. I wouldn't. You, he doesn't know what a spoiler is. But anyway, I mean, it was a decent ending. It just, it was kind of a, a letdown. Like, what? Don't. You will spoil the movie for people. Because that was a pop point at the end. You can't say things. You can't have a review of an M. Night Shyamalan movie with no spoilers because it's all about the twists and the damn spoilers, Yes, Brittany. and you shouldn't ruin people's experience. But I thought it did a really good job of depicting, like, even though it's about being a superhero, when it comes down to it, the movie was really about mental illness and how that just because someone has a different way of thinking doesn't mean... That it's bad per se, but the way we interpret that makes it bad. Like Bruce Willis's character, he can touch people and see their intentions, 
It's not a bad power, and what he does with it isn't bad. Because, I mean, he also has physical powers. Like, he's and, impenetrable and those, or whatever. Those whatnot. are undeniable, right? In the, in the whole movie, and you can get this from the trailer, she's essentially trying to convince these people... That they're not That they're super. not superheroes. And in Tent saying, well, if we can break that mental idea that you're a superhero... Then you're cured. It's kind of like telling someone they don't have depression. Yeah, exactly. And it's I, like you you know in your heart of hearts you know when you're, you're depressed. Just sad. It's like why don't you smile more? You know why don't you just get over it? Maybe and go to the park or something. The one guy has dissociative identity disorder. Yeah, from Split, and that was a great movie. It was, and, and I think it also did a really great job of talking about yeah. This movie illness. explores more of his personalities and more of how he, he struggles. I thought he had 23, but I felt like in this movie he had like 46. But no, they didn't explore all 24. I guess. 23. Plus well, the beast. Oh, plus the beast. Well, I, he's not really a personality so much as a physical... I mean, he is, but he isn't. Right, but they, they say 24 to include the beast. But see, the thing is, is because of his upbringing and because of what happened to him as a child, even though he was given this, like, gift, per se... It's cursed. He, he used it, is it poorly because his ch- upbringing was so bad. And because of, uh, and I don't want to talk about, like, there's some other spoilers in there but related to Mr. Glass and whatnot. But basically, his childhood is ruined because of his mother and his lack of father. And right. that causes him to be this beast. Maybe he wouldn't have ever even developed these personalities. No, because it, it does reveal in the movie that... He did ha- have DID. Like, yes, but they wouldn't have been so... Some of the personalities may not have evolved. Yeah. So they each came from a need to... And they're all very different, and they're all, they all serve their own purpose. Right, but the Beast might not have been a bad guy had he been grown up differently. Right, like, the, the Beast is there to protect the Crumb, the Wendell, whatever his name is. Yeah. Right? Um... It's there to protect Kevin. Kevin. That's it. Uh, he's there to protect Kevin. And if Kevin never needed protecting, then the Beast never would have been born. And even if the Beast was born, maybe he would have done good things. But being a evil isn't necessarily like... You're not just born one way and you're evil. It's just... It just happens because of your experiences or the, what happens to you. Or just, yeah. I mean, some people are definitely born with the tendency to be more evil than others. Yeah, some people aren't hugged enough as a kid. Some people are hugged too much. Genetically, like, there are definitely genetic... Like, genetics is a whole thing, and I studied some in college. I'm by far no expert, but genetically, there are predispositions to certain things like addiction and, and anger and... So, to say someone isn't predisposed to be evil isn't necessarily something you can 100% say, but nobody is born evil. Same with the dogs. He's a baby. It, 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 ties, it ties in. But um, I felt like the action sequences in this were really good. Um, it's kind of more of a mind twist because the, the main character of this one is Mr. Glass, right? In Unbreakable, it was more about Bruce Willis's character. Yeah, I mean, in Split, it, it was all about. I mean, it it definitely deals more with each of them. The horde. Than, um, but in this movie, yes, Mr. Glass is supposed to be right. prominent. He no, and and what does he have? A, he has a real name, right? I forget. Yeah, Elijah. Oh, yeah, I thought right. I was going to say Elijah. But, but uh, Elijah, he is not prominently featured in this movie until the latter half. But well, because he, he's, he's in it, but yeah, but but he's been in this mental hospital and he's kind of been sedated. heavily sedated so that he can't use his superior mental because he kept getting skills. out. Right, he he outsmarts them, and so this mm-hmm. the movie as it progresses without spoilers, he's always three steps ahead of the game, and that's what makes this movie interesting. That yes, there's action and there's superhero stuff, but it's getting into the mindset of this brilliant man with a breakable body. Like. I also had a major issue with the raincoat. I get it. He he can't be with water. It's his... Not not Mr. Glass, the other one. Um, I don't even remember any of their names. It's not been super important. Oh. Kevin had too many names, so no, I forgot... He's the Horde. So I forgot everyone else's name. call him the Horde. But, I, but anyway... Patricia and Hedwig. Okay, the raincoat looked dumb. Like, he couldn't have bought it. tiptoe man, He's dear. been doing it for... No, the, what the, they called him the... 
the other thing. I forget what the name was. Uh, Overseer. The Overseer. Okay, he's been doing this for clearly a while. His kid is like 20. Yeah. Okay. He's old enough to run his shop. So he's been doing it for probably 15 to 20 years. 15 maybe. 15 years? Okay, well, okay, no, 19 years. That's how long. No, it was 19 years since he survived the, the crash. The accident. So he's been doing it for 17-ish years. Yeah. Okay. He couldn't have got a better raincoat or something better at this point. Like, he's wearing the same raincoat. How long has he had this raincoat? Did he go and buy 50 identical raincoats? Raincoats rip so easily. Not when you're a superhero. The raincoat isn't impenetrable. Maybe it's special. I just thought that was My dumb. brand. That seemed like a plot uh, error. Yeah, I know. It, no, and I, I tried explaining it. It's it's a way to feel like a menacing super without pointing yourself out, being like, "Hi, I'm a superhero." He looked like a perv that he was gonna open his coat and sell you dildos. I'm sorry, that's just like <laughs> he was like, "Want to see my wares?" Like that's what it looked like. <laughs> Time pieces or something. <laughs> like that's what his outfit looked like. Yeah. But Overall, I, I, I enjoyed it though. I mean, it was good. I gave it three buckets. I'd, I'd give it three and a half. I think it, it wraps up the two. Granted, both of those movies didn't need sequels, but kind of tying them together and seeing them, seeing what M. Night Shyamalan did. I like that did. they brought back that girl from the split. Yeah, no, they brought back a lot. And they got the same, the, you're sure that they yeah, got the same. Yeah, that's the same kid. He looks exactly, he has to be. Yeah, Bruce Willis' son, who was like 10 years old in the first movie. They brought him back. They brought him back. And it everything ties in. Now, I'm pretty sure... They changed up uh, Elijah's mom. I'm pretty sure she was recast. I don't remember. I don't remember about Mr. Glass's mom. The old one's probably passed away. Probably. I mean, it was a while ago. Sam Jackson's like in his 60s. Yeah, so if they had someone playing his mom... In her 60s, then Chances are she's probably either too old to act or she's passed away. Right. She's permanently retired. Um, Mama belly. But yeah, I, I thought it was a... A really good, interesting film that, and you know, people have superhero fatigue, but I don't see this as a superhero movie. This was not a comic book or a psychological movie, thriller, but it is heavily reliant on the tropes of comic books, on the idea of superheroes they say in the are, real world. Comics are real, and they're all written about real people. The end. Right, but it's not like you know, comic books are coming to life or based on comic book characters. No, it's the real world. Where it's basically comic books exist. It's like based on a true story. Based on a true story. That's, a, that's essentially what it implies that comic books are. Yeah. But you know how the true story movies are never true. accurate. Which it's is like a, Annabelle's just based which on is a good, Raggedy Ann. Which is a good segue into the next movie, which was also based on a true story called The Upside. The Upside. There was a French movie, which was called Unbreakable, which is really... Was it called The Unbreakables? The Unbreakables, right? Right. Okay, so essentially the plot of this movie is Kevin Hart's character is a down on his luck guy ex-felon. who ex felon oh. who is trying you. Bless bless you. you. Who is trying to he has to find a job or look for a job in order to keep his parole officer happy and he accidentally wanders into this guy, uh Brian Cranston's character who's interviewing caretakers because he fired the last one. He's a paraplegic who needs someone to basically do... <laughs> bless bless you. you. To take care of him. Yeah. So... Puppy. I know. She got the sneezes. It was really good. Um, can I say it was, like, my favorite movie, like, ever? No, but, I mean, it wasn't normally something I would have seen on my own. But it was, it was a good, solid film. Right. And I kind of did a little bit of research into the real story. There are two real people that that's really happened to, and a lot of the facts are based in stuff that really happened. Like, there's a scene where they're getting away from the cops, and they use his disability to get out of a speeding ticket. And apparently, that was his favorite like prank to do and like Mm -hmm. they would just speed around and he would use his disability to like that was something that really happened um but and overall they even got the names kind of close like they didn't use the exact names of the people it's based on but it was Dell versus Abdel that's the movies and the names of the movie people in the French version but are those the real people's names 
I thought they were. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get that far into it. I just kind of looked up some general basics. But overall, I thought it captured the total essence of the real story. Like, and they still kind of made it into a dramatic comedy. It which was is kind of an oxymoron. also. It was but. funny. Like it was actually funny. Not, Not as, like fake ass funny. Like okay, we saw Night School a few months ago, and that movie was pretty fake funny. Like it. It wasn't. Were that there funny. jokes in that movie? Yeah. But were they good? No. no they were forced. Like but, a fart in church. But this movie... What, that doesn't even make any sense. Why would you force a fart in church? Piss off your dad. This is... Illogically is a terrible metaphor. Yeah, well. Anyway. This movie was actually funny. Like, the jokes felt like something like you would say to your... Like, if you were a funny person, it felt like something you would say. Like, and they were... They're organic. Yeah, they were organic jokes. Like, I felt like it was really good. Also, I found out this movie has been sitting in the the vault, basically, for a while. They... After, after the whole Weinstein debacle. Yeah, okay, it was originally made by Harvey Weinstein Company, and obviously that company has gone bankrupt, and another film company bought the rights to this film, and, but it was already basically made, I think. Right, and so Kevin Hart's probably made three or four films since he completed... The upside, and it's just now hitting theaters. I would definitely say this is one of Kevin Hart's better films because it shows off his dramatic and like his acting ability. It's not just like do some more of that stand-up bit, dance for me. Like yeah, right? it's not making Kevin Hart into a goofy character. Like yeah. sometimes that works. Like in Jumanji, that really worked. Right, but, but being a clown all the time doesn't, doesn't show always anybody. Work. He was a more real person. Yeah, and it showed that he, oh. you know. That he can have struggles, that he he can work, and Brian Cranston does a great job too. But he always does. Yeah, now he very rarely. He's getting a lot of down. crap uh-huh. about because a lot of people are saying you can't you can't get an able-bodied person to play a okay. paraplegic. How many paraplegic actors do you know with that kind of ability? And it's not their fault because the, even though there are some, because there aren't as many roles for someone like that. They aren't I'm given sorry, the opportunity to, to but, reach that okay, star status. It's not like being a certain race or gender or, like, sexuality. Okay, saying that you have multiple roles for a paraplegic, I'm not, like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the it happens. But you can only play a quadriplegic. No, even if you just, like, say you're in a wheelchair, you, you can fake not being able to use your arms, right? But disabled people... You have to think how many disabled people are not only entering acting, but are actively getting roles like this, and they fit the demographic of the person that they're trying to play. Like there might be a great quadriplegic but they, actor who's in their thirties, and they're a young female, and they're Asian. It's not going to fit this role, no, because it regardless was based, of how quadriplegic was, they are. Because it was based on a true story, and right. the real guy was an old white guy. Right. And so, like Kevin Hart's character was a uh, was an ex con black dude, right? Oh. And if they had tried to cast an actual quadriplegic, it would have been great for the disabled community, but it also may not have fit what the narrative needed for the story. So, anybody who's giving Brian Cranston crap, it's a role. It's not his fault. Okay, the casting director look, wanted to do that. Look, here's my thing. Okay, you can't say that you want to cast someone for a certain role. Like, okay, and and probably people aren't going to like this, but saying you cast a straight person as gay and then people getting mad about it is, is not okay when, like, gay people can play straight people. Okay, And they've had to for a long time. But you also can't exclude someone because of their sexuality, race, or now obviously whitewashing is a major thing and I don't agree with that casting white people as Asian characters is ridiculous casting Matt Damon in a movie about the Great Wall of China was a little bit much yeah okay but casting a character that's just generic as white is okay as long as other races were given the opportunity and you're not exclusively casting one race, like, one white, all white cast. Like, that's not okay. 
It's not okay to just cast straight white people. It's right. not. And it's also not okay to just cast a token character because, you know, well, we, oh, we need diversity. We need a black guy, an Asian lady, and a Hispanic person. Like, that's not okay. Right. But where they have no real value, you just cast them to be that yeah. way. I love Michael B. Jordan. But there was no reason... To make the Human Torch black no, in that movie. It, that, it didn't add anything... That wasn't my issue with it. To the plot. Okay, no, they cast him as black, but then they were backpedaled and were like, well, we can't have a black girl, so we're going to make her adopted. That was dumb. Just cast an African-American girl. Like, just cast them. If you want to do it, do like, it. Like, just do it. Like, don't be afraid. It's okay, Okay, look, you're not going to cast an Asian guy and be like, well, he's the dad of that black kid, but his mom is white. Like, that doesn't... Okay, you, you got to have some logic here. Yeah, there's a difference between being diverse and... Being illogical. Yeah, like, I mean, look, look at look at a chart. I also... Well, don't what's ag- the name of that chart with the, with the pea plants? Uh, uh, Mandela, yeah. A Mendelian chart, yeah. whatever. I mean... Look at it. White people having a kid unless I, there was an affair involved. I also don't agree with casting <laughs> a brown-eyed child to two blue-eyed parents, but that's being nitpicky, I suppose. Yeah. You can't have a brown-eyed kid if you, you both your parents have blue eyes. So if you have brown eyes and both your parents have brown, you're somebody that's not your dad. Sorry. Spoiler. <laughs> um... But overall, like we've gotten way off topic tonight. I think we're tired. But overall, it was good. It had a great depiction. I felt it did a really good job of depicting the struggles of having disabilities versus like like their and, and the struggles of get, getting back into the workforce after being a felon. Like both characters went on a journey of self and betterment. And even the the uh, secondary characters like Nicole Kidman, uh, they. Everyone sees growth in the movie, and it's it's heartfelt. It's funny. Except the neighbor. There's some action. He's an ass. There's some action. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a great movie. I'd it probably, was good. I gave it. I gave it a four. I would. I would agree. Uh, a four, a solid four, is where the upside is at. Um, this next one had a limited release. Uh, not everywhere it got not, it. I don't know why you keep saying that. It released in a lot of places. Like, you keep saying it had a limited release. Like, it didn't come out places. We live in a small town. It came out here. But it wasn't as widely received. It was a... I don't want to say Where did you budget. get that from? You want me to Google that shit? Yes. Okay. He keeps saying replicas. You, you talk about replicas. Okay. I'm going to pull it up. He keeps saying... And then I'll hear... That replicas had a limited release. I'm, I'm going to get you with that I told you so. You watch. Okay. Okay, so Replicas, I was more up my alley, and I definitely enjoyed it quite a bit. It's a a science movie. Basically, Keanu Reeves' character is a scientist who's working on transferring the brains of the, the mental brain, not the physical brain, of dead people into robots. Okay, so basically, so you can live forever, essentially, is what's going on. But early on in the movie, his family dies. Like, there's an accident... And they're all dead, right? So, what he does is he's like, okay, I gotta replicate him. So, he calls his buddy, and they scan their brains, and he grows them in some pods. Um, and there's a kind of, I mean, should I talk about the daughter? I mean, it's, it's kind of a spoiler, but it was pretty early on. Basically, they only have three pods, but he has four family members, so he has to pick one. And so there's a whole thing where he's figured out how to, like, nitpick certain memories and he's erased them. And I thought it was really good. There were a couple of science mess-ups, I, as what I wrote in my notes. I don't really remember exactly what they were, but I, I, there were some issues. Um, I think it was mostly, like, cognitive stuff that doesn't make any sense. But it, it had some decent acting. The The side characters were definitely really good. Um... Have you found any limited release information about that film? Well, I can tell say it was a flop. Well, yeah. Uh, I knew it was a flop. With a budget of 30, 30 million, uh, it's only grossed 3.2 I mean, million. 
See, but to me that seems like, wow, I made 3.2 million, but I It means guess... you made 10%, which coincidentally is also the Rotten Tomatoes score. Mm. Uh, it has a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, 18% on Metacritic, 5.5 out of 10, but 79% said they liked the movie. It was a good movie. Because it wasn't a bad movie. Uh, I, I enjoyed the, the sidekick character. He was pretty because funny. Because he, he is the second part. While Keanu Reeves' okay, Foster is all look. about the brain, he's all about human cloning. The sidekick is all about yeah, actual that, human that, cloning. That's how it works. So Keanu Reeves is, is, is trying to clone brains, but not actual brains. While the side character is physically cloning things. But he's, up until this point, and I thought this was a little unbelievable, that up until this point they've never successfully made a human, and yet... So they, they, they replicate they three, three perfectly. perfectly the first time. Um, like I said, there were some science issues. Um, logically, some of it didn't make any sense. Um, like, okay, my one of my major issues was... Okay, I, I don't really know a whole lot about cloning, so I can't for sure say that this is true. But they basically, they clone them, and after they get out of the tank... They lay them in bed for a while, and they keep them sedated so they can figure out how to perfectly transfer the brain, the, the, their memories. And when they wake up, they just get out of bed, and they're just the one lady just running and stuff. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, weren't her, wouldn't her muscles be atrophied? Like, I, I don't know for sure, but it just seemed to me like she would need some time to figure out how to walk again. Mm-hmm. She's never walked before. And yet she's running, like... Yeah, like, well... Uh, yeah, Replicas, it was the worst opening of Reeves' career, but it was a wide release. So, I take I told it back. you! But, they also didn't spend shit on advertising. No, I feel like that was a major mistake, because I feel like with an empty... I mean... They released it in January, which is typically a bad month to no, release things. And it was released on the same weekend as all these other movies we've talked about. On the same day as The Upside, A Dog's Way Home, and On the Basis and of Sex. And those all had much higher... Not The Basis of Sex, but they all had a much higher... Because no, On the Basis of Sex actually came out last month, but it Because it, it saw... was a limited release. Yeah. I don't think you know what a limited release is. It was an is. early release. So they probably did it for noms, like nominations and stuff. Yeah. You got either there's a cutoff date. So anyway, I thought it was a solidly enjoyable storyline. Uh, I liked it. It was interesting enough. I've read a couple books kind of similar to it, but it was interesting and different enough that I definitely enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some really there was some questionable CGI toward the end. Yeah, especially but, with the robot. No, and. A lot of the stuff with the technology, it feels like they hearken back to his days in Matrix with it. Like, okay, it's been done over and over, but you know how people, like, spread this digital computer screen into the air, and then they, like, tap the air, and it moves things around? It's one of those sci-fi tropes that is essentially like, well, we don't know what to do. So we're just gonna have our actor swipe and flip and do things I in the air, and we're gonna add it in later. I that, that, though, that, um... That was more like he could see it in his mind, and it really, his hand gestures didn't really do anything so much as he was mentally moving it. Do you know what I mean? Right, and then and they just add it in later and be like, well, this could go there, and so you just move this file there. They do it in Avengers. They, I they didn't do it mind in it. All sorts of places. They it, do it in it, Ready Player it, One. And... Logically, it makes sense as the next step as to where technology would go, so I, I don't mind it so much. Um, it had a really good ending. I liked it. it I mean,. Basically, the major... It ain't getting a sequel anytime soon. It doesn't need a sequel. It finished off really nice. I know, um, but... <laughs> there was some good CGI, too, though. But there was some bad CGI. I like the cloning. There was some the practical... The pods and stuff. Practical like the effects practical. on the cloning. And... Yeah, um... The major pot is, like... They're almost get. They're gonna get shut down. So, really, it's not even so much about his family being dead and having to bring them back. It's more about them sh- almost getting shut down and so he has to figure out a way to keep his project open while still trying to grow he has a new these, family these millions of dollars worth of pods stashed in, away in his in garage his, yeah in his basement or his basement i'm sorry but yeah like so it's kind of this 
this balance between him stressing out over the job shutting down and his him, family died. Yeah, but the ethics and morals that this guy just ignores and like i was saying with the sidekick he keeps bringing it up he says this is illegal we should be calling the cops this is so stupid and he's like i'm gonna do it with or without you okay i guess okay i get look i had a major problem with the fact that it okay i get it your family just died so you're not thinking clearly but it's like three days later and he's still like has not, like, called anyone to be like, hey, my wife's sick, she's not coming into work. Hey, my kids are taking... We have right, a major he's spaced. Food. Like, he could have been like, we're quarantined, we can't come out the house. Or like, like hey... Uh, we took an unplanned vacation. Grandma's in town. Grandma's... Something. Like, somebody's dead. Anything. Like, we have to go to a funeral. Like, he, there were any number of things... He, and he doesn't come up with a good excuse... The whole time, it takes, what, 19 days for them to grow? And when they come out of the pods and wake up and realize they've lost 19 days, he doesn't have, he hasn't thought about... He doesn't have an explanation at oh, all. Oh, like, y'all were in an accident, you're fine, no, nothing. Like, and they warn him at the very beginning, they say, hey, uh, they could be born with their intestines outside of their body. They could be severely mentally or physically handicapped, because cloning is hard. And then they come out and they're like, I'm perfect. Like, it's just, it's it shady. It's shady in all sorts of ways. But, but if you in- can suspend disbelief for a moment and just kind of enjoy the film, it's not I just, too bad. I really did have a hard time believing he just like, well, because it wasn't just 19 days. They're kept under sedation for like two or three days after that. Right, because hard, he doesn't have a formula right. I just had a hard time thinking that... At no point was he like, this is a, I've got to come up with an explanation for this stuff. Like, also, okay, like I said earlier, he has to pick one of his kids, because obviously he needs his wife, because the kids are going to notice if mom's not around. Right, but they got three pods and four people. It's like... Okay, he doesn't come up with an explanation. Like, he just erases it out of his family's mind. But what is he going to tell everyone else? I had another kid, but poof, now they're gone? Like I don't know what you're talking about. Zoe who? Yeah. Like, there's all sorts of plot holes in that, re- in that regard. It would, be, it would have been much easier for them to say, look, y'all died. Y'all are back to life. And I will get Zoe back in a few days. I'm sorry, but it will just take a minute. Yeah. Like, it's way but it, easier. It, it was really, it was really good otherwise. Like, like I know we're complaining on it, but it, honestly, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I would probably give it three to three and a half buckets. I give it two and a half. It was an enjoyable film, but it wasn't like something I would like brag about to See, anybody. Yeah, but I liked, uh, I liked all the sciencey stuff. And even though some of it wasn't. Also, I had a major breakdown about this goldfish in the film. Because it's in a tiny bowl. Okay, do not keep your goldfish in bowls. They get very big, and the whole myth about they only grow as big as the container, that's true, but their organs keep growing, and so basically their organs grow until their insides explode. And I also hear that they uh, release enough ammonia that they can actually kill themselves. It's true. Um, But we're getting fish. That's cool. Yeah, we're getting we're setting up a fish tank. We're in the process of setting right, up. Right, so we're going to get some glowfish. We're going to name them after the Avengers. And we're getting a couple of shrimp, and there's going to be the Agents of the Shield. So uh, we're getting new pets. So, yeah, fish have been on the mind. Um, but, yeah, I give, it, I give it two and a half because it's watchable, but it's not something I'm going to buy on DVD. And if I'm not going to recommend it to anybody. If it was on TV, I would watch it. I would, I would watch certain scenes. I liked but it. But it was, it was forgettable for the most part. I liked part. the wife. She was pretty real. Oh, yeah. She took no shit from nobody. She was just like, my husband's an idiot. Yeah. Like, for, for genius, you are dumb. You are real dumb. All right. So let's talk about the last film. Escape uh, Room. Which was arguably my favorite film out of the five we saw. Next to Upside, probably for me. Upside was really fun. It was. So basically, it's basically what it sounds like. These people. How many were there? Six? Five, six. There were six. Six people. They get these cards. They think they're from people they know, but they not. 
And then they get there. They get there, and it's a real escape room. Like, they gonna murder you if you don't escape. Right. I And they slowly get picked off. I am, I'm a huge fan of Murder World uh, in the X-Men with Arcade. And this is kind of like if an escape room was integrated into kind of a murder theme park. So each each room has its own theme and another way to kill you. But so, all the themes... Oh, I don't want to say that because well, it'll get No, it, it, it says it in the trailer. All the themes it's are kind of, based on each person. Right. It's They're not just chosen at random. Each of Each of these rooms and tests and things... They are personal. And it definitely explains why at the end. I yeah. don't want to say too much. No, but but, but it definitely has a personal uh, personal plot point that they go in there and they're reminded of things from their past. And The rooms and... were really cool. And I bet there's a lot of detail we missed oh, watching absolutely. it. We could watch it again and probably pick up a the, lot of stuff. The rooms themselves had a lot of intricate detail. Though the character, I mean, the characters got it okay. But I, I definitely picked up on clues. Like, there was one clue, and it was like, what is this word? And I, and I saw antlers, and I was like, it's Rudolph. Like, <laughs> Obviously, but they had to draw it out I mean, for the dib dibs out there. Robert didn't get it, so... I would have gotten it eventually. But to be fair, we you gotta think, when, when you think of characters being dumb... You see, you're seeing it from the whole picture, and you're seeing it from the outside. You're not in the moment of things. Yeah. So when you're in that kind of situation, you don't know... If you've ever actually done an escape room, like, you know that sometimes you don't see obvious clues. It, it did inspire and, us to no, actually go to one. And it, actually, you overlook the same thing over and over and over again, even though the answer's right there. You just don't... You just don't put the pieces together. So it makes sense. But yes, we did go to an escape the room with uh, Brittany's mom and a few uh, other people. Strangers. Strangers. But the strangers were pretty smart. And we, we actually... We got out in 34 and a half minutes. And it's a, it was a 60 minute room. We got out in 34 and a half. We were very and smart. We, and we looked it up online and there were a lot of people who took a lot longer. They thought we cheated. Yeah, they asked us if we cheated. Basically. And we're like, well, if we cheated, we... I mean, thank you for the compliment. But no, we did not. No, we did not. Um, But the Escape Room movie, like Brittany said, it picks people off kind of one at a time. But the different rooms, you know, there's upside down rooms, there's frozen rooms, there's oven rooms, there's um, there's drug 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 induced craziness rooms. Uh, Um, And it was just fun kind of seeing Saw. As an escape room. Basically. I liked it. I wish there was more blood, but I understand why there wasn't, because they wanted to make it PG-13. But I liked it that way. Like, Yeah, it, you liked it. it. I It leaves it to the imagination. I, I'm all for blood and, and like... Well, maybe, maybe the next escape room would be Sawing into R. your fingers and, and whatnot. What? So so instead of it just being like, oh, now you have to escape the room, it like shows the room like stripping the flesh off their bones. And... Well, as long as there's no teeth, I'm okay. Teeth room. Ha- Nothing but teeth and fingernails. I have a real thing with teeth and fingernails. <laughs> I, I can't. But, but I uh, I really enjoyed Escape Room, and it it does a strong case for a sequel, so I hope that it Or did, a prequel. Or a prequel. Because there's a part in the movie, and it talks about, this is clearly not the first time. Right. This is, that, they're experienced at doing these escape rooms. Yeah. Um, I liked the upside down room. That was probably my favorite room. I think the I think the the initial one just the kind of the, kind, just... Kind, yeah kind of the idea of you not knowing it's escape room until you're already in it that that right there is already pretty scary. That's pretty cool. Um, but escape room, there will probably be another one, and I definitely I think will it was go a see success. it. Yeah, I th- I think it did well enough in the box office where people are going to I want mean, to because those kind of movies, and I, I'm sure this was a little higher budget than say like Paranormal Activity, obviously because that was a ridiculously low budget. But horror movies tend to be lower budget, but if they make so they, if they make any kind of money, it's easy to make. They'll probably as long as these keep doing well, they'll probably have like six of these. Let's be honest. Okay, I don't know if you've ever seen the the Cube movies, but we watched those, and it was kind of like that, only a little bit better. And, and they, I, I'm not, I, didn't, I like Escape Room more than I like the Cube movies. Yeah, I mean. Uh, and the Cube movies are also done on a ridiculously cheap budget. Yeah, they had like one. They are super low. They budget. have like like one or two cubes next to each other, basically. And right. They just and re- all they have to do is they just have to move the just, camera yeah, to look like it's a different room. They they just reset the. I bet they did that movie on like. 
less than a million dollars. Easy. Well, let's say it was a long time ago, so it was probably something similar to paranormal activity budget. Yeah. Um, but, but the only real issue I had with this movie is this supposedly really smart girl. She doesn't seem that smart. She said Euler's name wrong, didn't she? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you know anything about mathematics, you know about uh, the principles of Euler, and, you know, he has a constant... Two point seven one eight two eight one eight two eight four five nine zero four five, and uh, she pronounced it Euler, as in like, Bueller. And I and I turned to Brittany and I'm like, that's wrong. Like, if she's such a genius, she would she would know how to pronounce Euler's name. Right. Like the average person, like I knew how to pronounce it, and Robert did too. But we studied that sort of stuff in college. But the average person wouldn't know how to say that, which is fine and I'm but if good. But she's, if she's a brilliant but yeah, scientist. But, yeah, she's supposed to be a genius. She's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to study, you know, fifth dimension physics yeah, on, she, my, on my spare time. She's like a nerd. And she, I'm sorry, there's no way a real nerd of her caliber wouldn't know how to pronounce that. Right. Um, but, the, and the big escape room guy, like, he doesn't last as long as I thought he would. And so he was like, yeah, I know escape rooms. I'm the best at them. I've done 300 escape rooms. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. He could have done so well. He's a really talented actor, too. He was in Atypical. Yeah. As um, the side character. I forget his name, but... Me, me too, but he's the, he's the best friend of the, of the main and character he, of he's Atypical. He's a talented, talented young man. I look forward to seeing him in more movies. Right. I hope he never sells out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... I mean, I think that's pretty much it. I gave it three and a half buckets. Oh, I'd give it four. But that was I, a fun I, I think I would. I think that's initially what I gave it. But after seeing the other ones, I would probably up it to four, simply because I really enjoyed it. I love seeing people die in needless, funny ways. Like, like it wasn't really funny, but they were they were amusing ways. I just wish there'd been more, like more death, more. Like interesting death, like even though this is a horror movie, you wish it was more gore. There was yeah, and there wasn't enough. There either needed to be more gore or more jump scares. In a movie like this, jump scares aren't really like thing. So you kind of have to see like no, because you were talking about the cube. Like in the cube, like there's some lava or booby trap. So like you'll fall and and like saws will come out and slice your. And like, like your body apart or yeah. lasers or yeah, so there's something. Like, there's like jump scares and but also real scares and like. But this one had like real, like okay, there's there's some scenes where like you know falling is a big risk and so they have to keep from falling through the floor, and. That girl th- was dumb. That's scary. Fall, falling to your death is scary, but it's kind of. You know. My problem you is you don't see it. Is that some of these characters were just. So unbelievably, like, dumb. But I guess some people are just like that. Like, some people are just dumb. Like... Oh, well. That's just mm, survival of the fittest, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Which was essentially the theme of the movie. Yeah. Okay, so, these five... Mo- Don't touch me. Mm. Don't pinch me. These five movies. Replicas, Escape Room, A Dog's Way Home, Glass, and... Uh, the upside. Mm-hmm. How would you rank them from best to worst, or worst to best? As far as enjoyability goes, uh, Escape Room was probably my favorite. I liked it the best. Um, and then the upside and replicas for me would probably be tied around two or three. Upside was probably slightly better simply because it was funny, like and and replicas wasn't funny. And then I would probably say Glass. And then I and then Dog's Way Home, which I know that's surprising because I love dogs, but it was just boring. And yeah. her name was Bella. And let me tell you, working in a grooming salon, there is nothing more popular than the name Bella. So please don't name your dog Bella. And do not call me saying, oh, her name is Bella. She's been there before. Because I don't know which Bella it is. There's a thousand. Side to note. I yeah. Mean, For it, someone who's complaining about getting off track, which granted we are. It's annoying. Jeez, you you do it as much as I do. Yeah, but my sidetracks are funny. Oh, yeah. Your tangents are so much better than mine are. They're nicer. So, mine ranked, I would agree that Dog's Way Home was the least entertaining of the bunch. Uh, Replicas was next for me. It was sci-fi heavy, but it wasn't there. Well, uh, you're kind of sci-fi. Yeah. He likes space sci-fi. <laughs> uh... I really enjoyed the upside, but I'd say that was middle of the pack, because 
escape room was more exciting. And I would rank Glass at number one. Really? Just because it is a sequel to two movies that I truly enjoy. And that it, it does explore the idea that you may think that you're special, but you're not. And or you, well, are, you special are special and no one believes your ass. Right? And, I mean, just seeing I'm James Ma- de- seeing James McAvoy do another job as the Horde. God, James McAvoy. Phenomenal McAv- actor. I do, I do have to give it to him. Like, if we were ranking actors in these films, James McAvoy would probably be at the top because... He plays a fucking 15 different characters. He does a phenomenal job at just being... And switching between them, like, he does it at the drop of a hat. Like, it's and he, uncanny. He's clearly... I don't uh-huh. know... That's an X-Men reference, y'all. I don't know... That wasn't a good reference. No one's gonna get that. I just said it. I know, but it so wasn't good. Oh my god. Anyway, he's clearly written out like some kind of journal or something that's like of each character. Like he's clearly he knows what each character's personalities are and he knows exactly how they would behave and he did a phenomenal job. And he should be nominated for something. I don't know what, but something. Yeah. But I I, I think for for the performances of of Sam Jackson and, and James McCaffrey. Sam Jackson alone, also does a really I, good job. I think those two characters No, like I said, that cast was great. Yeah. I just felt there was a little lacking in the script itself. But to be fair, the cast of the upside was phenomenal. And yeah. I mean But their script es- was better. Escape room was okay. Casting wise, but the story and the rooms and the premise was better. So it was just I stand by it. It was a more enjoyable film simply because it was just like okay, I can watch this movie. I don't have to think too much. I don't have to worry about things. I don't have to worry about anything political or mind bending. I can just enjoy this movie for what it is, and that's the kind of movie I typically like to go to. Yes, it's nice to be like thoughtful and whatnot, but. I work hard. I put in a long week, and at the end of the day, when I go to you a want movie, some brain I just slush. I just want to sit there and enjoy it. I want it to be enjoyable. All right. Well, we need to wrap it up. I mean, we got distracted a lot tonight. We're yeah, sorry. I apologize, but you know, I, I hope that y'all can appreciate kind of entering our home for mm-hmm. a minute and just kind of letting us talk about movies and stuff happening personally. And the puppies. And the dogs. They are very cute. They are very cute. But you should share a picture of us on Instagram. Okay, so next few weeks, what do we got? I don't know. Well. Don't you have the list? Uh, somewhere. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up, and there's going to be a lot for Valentine's Day. Uh, but before that, there's a uh, kid who would be king so coming out next week. Then the week after that, there's Miss Bala. Which uh, I think looks really good. You're not as excited about I'm not about as that. excited about it, but then again, cartel movies aren't really my thing. I, I'm not a huge fan of, like, the big shoot 'em ups Well, the the main actress um, is Isn't played she... by Gina Rodriguez, and she is in uh, Jane the Virgin, which is a show I thoroughly enjoy, and I'm very oh. sad that this is going to be its last season. What? Nothing. What are you doing? I'll tell you later. Okay. Um, but, so, I'm very excited for it. But, um, I'm not sure what comes out the weekend of February the 8th. Uh, I know it's not a dry weekend, but I'm, there's nothing big, because February 14th, or 15th, we have a romantic comedy. Um, wh- what is it called? It's called Isn't It Romantic, I think. And that stars Rebel Wilson. That Serenity movie. I don't know if we'll get that. I'm assuming we all have posters out for An it. An Alita Battle Angel, which I know we're going to watch and we're going to discuss it. That but looks Br- bad. I know, and, but we're going to discuss that okay. when it comes out. Oh, my God. Cold uh, Pursuit is coming out. Yeah. We'll probably see that. I don't, I mean, the Lego movie part two, the second part is coming out, and I'm kind of excited for that. Right, and The Prodigy is coming Which out. Which also looks good. And What Men Want is coming out. See, we just forgot all this is coming out. Right, so, probably so there's, there's a shit ton coming we'll out. We'll be covering, for sure we'll be covering um, The Kid Who Would Be King. Um, we'll be covering Miss Bala. Um, and probably Cold Pursuit. 
in the Prodigy and Lego movie. Right. And, but and, I don't know when... And that all comes out before... Oh, and What Men Want, too. Yes, but I feel like we should probably... What Men Want will probably go on... And on the Valentine's Day? On the Valentine's Day, Day Because, okay, let's look, at, let's look at what we got for Valentine's Day weekend, right? So, we have What Men Want the week before, and then we have Alita Battle Angel, Fighting With My Family, Happy Death Day to You, and Isn't It Romantic? All coming out that so, weekend. So, one of the movies coming out February 8th, we will cover on val- our Valentine's Day podcast... And the other ones we'll cover the week before. So we'll probably put out two episodes back to back, but we won't have anything out for three weeks. Right. And and then there's probably going to be a and few. And then, then the movie stuff is really going to pick up in March. Um, right. Because after Valentine's Day weekend, there's only going to be like one oh, or two. There's How to Train Your Dragon is coming out. I'm pumped for that, but it may be a bit before we cover it. And then March 8th. We'll probably put a, a thing out right after Captain Marvel. Yeah, I think that's good. We're gonna put so we'll Captain Marvel. We'll put last. two out right in right in February, right around Valentine's Day, and then we'll put one in out oh, right after Captain Marvel. So it may be a bit in between. Right. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for today's uh, podcast. I really appreciate you. Sticking with us for the long haul and putting up Thanks, with all yeah. of our tangents and Thanks our for asides. If we offended anybody, I mean, I'm not that sorry. But uh, we also like we want to be considerate, but we also don't want to. None of my se- censor ourselves. Uh, sometimes we come off rude, and I don't mean anything rude. And I try to express exactly what I mean, but that doesn't always come off accurately. So I hope no one was super offended or anything. <laughs> But please follow us on the three major major social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, at Real Romance. Is that it, pretty much? That's pretty much it. See you next time. Bye, everybody.